Hello everyone and welcome to Theme Park Worldwide where we're here at Hong Kong Disneyland. It's my first ever time at the park and I cannot wait to see what the park has to offer. My first time back here in seven years and I'm excited to see the new things including the Castle of Magical Dreams. The castle's had a huge upgrade since last time I was here so excited to see that as soon as we walk down Main Street in just a moment. And also it only opened in November last year, World of Frozen as well. Oh, from photos and videos this area looks stunning. The location of this park is what really makes it. All the hills in the backdrop. It's a stunning park and hours today are 10.30 through until 8.30. Yeah, it owns a little bit later this park. Let's go. And as soon as you come in through the turnstiles, you are greeted with the wonderful train station there as well. And the railroad runs right along the front. And of course, you've got Mickey Mouse and all the flower beds as well. Welcome to Hong Kong Disneyland, our day one vlog. We've got two full days here. There's just something so magical about walking underneath the archway, under the train station, here in the Main Street Music Loop, and seeing Mickey Mouse just over there. I like how they've got a pagoda in the middle for it, and that's very nice for the carry to meet and greets. As we make our way down Main Street USA, just here. The fire department's over there. Yeah, Main Street, very similar to that of the original Disneyland in California. Now, this park opened back in 2005, and to be honest, it opened with a lack of attractions. So we've really seen a lot of investment, especially in the past few years here at Hong Kong Disneyland. One of the biggest changes that's happened here since my last visit seven years ago is the fact the castle has now completely changed. It, before, it was actually a clone of the Disneyland castle. And as you can see now, it's the castle of magical dreams. Look at that. Wow, that looks beautiful. And with the backdrop as well. That is beautiful, really special walking down and seeing that and just behind it you can actually see World of Frozen there as well and here's a close-up look at the castle of magical dreams completed in 2020 I think this looks amazing and it's really nice how Hong Kong Disneyland has now got its own unique castle as well um, very different to all the others but in fact they didn't just demolish the old castle that was here they kept it and you can just see Disneyland's castle there at the bottom and that was the top turret just there and they extended on it repainted the bottom section and made it the Castle of Magical Dreams. I think it looks great, I really like that. And with all the hills behind it as well, beautiful. Hey, we just come around the corner, you gotta push the magic bin out just over here. <laughs> you got a nice fan there, aren't you Charlotte? Oh my God, I have never felt heat like this before. It is so hot. Yeah, the humidity in Hong Kong is quite something, it really is. Yeah, bear that in mind if you are coming here. Woof, we are sweating. And there's a look at the back of the Castle of Magical Dreams. Make our way through Fantasyland and we're going to head straight for World of Frozen, which is just down here on the right hand side. You might be thinking, blimey, Fantasyland doesn't look very busy. Well, the attendance levels here at Hong Kong Disneyland are the lowest of any Disney park. Yeah, it's really quiet here compared to other Disney parks around the world, especially compared to Tokyo, where we just been. Oh no, that was so busy, wasn't it? It was, it's that quiet here. But uh, you've got staggered openings. The left-hand side of the park doesn't open until 11 o'clock, so half an hour after. And actually, during off-peak times, it's the only Disney park to close one day a week. Like, it actually shuts on an off-peak day. We're gonna make our way now into World of Frozen. Celebrate summer snow day. Woo, no snow today. 33 degrees Celsius. Oh, there's the train going over. We make our way into this land. It looks amazing, this with the backdrop. So welcome to World of Frozen here in Hong Kong. This opened in November 2023, so it's not even a year old yet. And this looks beautiful with the backdrop. That's the castle. And you've got two attractions. You've got Wandering Oak and Sliding Slays just over there. And also Frozen Ever After down here as well. And what we're seeing coming to Disneyland Paris in Walt Disney Studios Park, or Disney Adventure World as it's been renamed to, is going to be very similar to what we're seeing here in Hong Kong. How beautiful is this? Oh, this is stunning. They've done an amazing job of this. All the little details. Oh, it's beautiful, especially in the sunshine. And what makes it is the backdrop as well. Like, we'll get some more shots from further back. But we'll go for a 30 minute wait for Frozen Ever After. Look at the clock tower and everything. All the details. This is very pretty. Oh, I'm just in the nice undercover queue line air conditioned as well because it feels like oh 36 God. degrees celsius the humidity Woo! Oh 
Our queue's moving quite fast so far. Lots of nice theming to look at. <laughs> look at all the blocks of ice just out there. And some carrots as well. <laughs> It's got a lot more interior queue line than Frozen Ever After in Epcot, which is good to see. And there's some very nice details around. And about 30 minutes later, we're here waiting to get on Frozen Ever After. Let's go. Beautiful queue line that was. Nice high capacity boats on this one. Fantastic dark ride, it really is. Very similar to the version in Epcot. However, there were some subtle differences in here, wasn't there? One thing that surprised me in there was the size of the drop, it was huge. Yeah, the drop was a lot steeper. And also what I really like with this version as well is the animatronics. They weren't the projection ones. Uh, they were full on proper animatronics, uh, which I really enjoyed seeing. Uh, the layout of the scenes, pretty much identical to that of Frozen Ever After at Epcot. Uh, there was a few more bits of theming around and some of the scenes felt a little bit larger as well. Also, of course, it is a high capacity ride with the boats on there uh, but I really enjoyed it now of course we go to all these different theme parks and attractions around the world we don't like to compare things too much but as last week we literally just did experience the frozen dark ride in Fantasy Springs at Tokyo Disney Sea this did film a little bit underwhelming after that didn't it? Did, it? Yeah. The one at Tokyo Disney Sea was amazing it literally blew us away it did and don't get me wrong this is still a fantastic ride it's coming to Disneyland Paris and it'll be a really nice addition um, but yeah it's certainly uh, not quite up to the standard of that from Fantasy Springs still we really enjoyed it and this area is beautiful I'm loving the fact that you've got the North Mountain and then the Ice Palace up there on the top all these buildings and the castle just over there as well you can't go inside the castle it's just there for photos it is very nice and then over on the other side of the water there's a look at Wandering Oak and Sliding Sleighs which is the Vacoma coaster that they've got in here unfortunately that isn't going to be coming over to Paris but we are getting all the rest of the area, including the little lighthouse over there. So let's go and see some of the views. How beautiful is this? And with the backdrop, oh, it is stunning. And that's the thing, you can only get a backdrop like this in a Disney park here in Hong Kong. Like, it just really makes it with the castle there. Oh, they've done such a good job. Oh, it looks amazing. I hope that one day in the future you'll be able to go inside the castle though. It'd be great for like a meet and greet spot. Yeah, I'm surprised that uh, they didn't make it a meet and greet area. Oh, but yeah, it looks stunning. It really does. I'm very excited now for the second attraction that there is in the area. Wandering Oak and Sliding Slaves just over here. And we've got a 40 minute advertised wait for wandering oak and sliding slaves but we thought we may as well do it whilst we've been down here in the area 
Oops, on the snow day blowout. Got a little sauna scene here as well. <laughs> That's in the queue for Frozen Ever After at Epcot. Queue's moving quite fast actually. Again, lots to see in the queue line here. Huh? I call the sleigh design just over here. Thirty minute wait, and here we go. Let's go and get into our sleigh. Off we go! Bye! Have you met Ted? Love my nose! Oh, that's a good scene, I like that! Oh, you feel that? It's a very short ride that. Very seen it though. The first time, the you enjoy my slide? Yeah. See you next time. Well, that's a full on ride POV there from Wandering Oak and Sliding Slaves. Firstly, we've got to speak about the length of that, haven't we? It was very short. I was expecting it to fail a bit longer, but it felt very short. Don't get me wrong, though, it was a good ride experience. There's some good drops and turns on there, and the views going around the mountain were fantastic. And looking over towards the castle uh, and the North Mountain, like, I did enjoy it, but yeah, I think it could have done with being a longer ride that. Uh, it should have been something really a bit like the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, uh, higher capacity as well. I think that's just running two trains. But still, we waited 30 minutes. It was a new experience for us. I did enjoy seeing it. The animatronic at the beginning with Sven <laughs> and Olaf was fantastic. He'd got his nose. Oh, it was fantastic. I did really enjoy it. We had a very short coaster. I am really impressed with this frozen area though. Like with the water here and the mountains, it just looks fantastic, it really does. And the fact that you have got two attractions in here, the thing to compare that with the coaster is more along the lines of Barnstormer in Magic Kingdom. Uh, that's the kind of level you're looking at there in terms of the length. Could have done with being longer, but still, it was good fun and we did enjoy it. And it's got a nice indoor queue as well. Both these attractions really thought about the humidity that you get here in Hong Kong. Now there's also a big restaurant over on the left hand side there as well, the Golden Crocus Inn. And then on the right hand side you've actually got an interactive show which is just built, built behind the coaster with Anna and Elsa so we'll probably check that out at some point whilst we're here. And you've also got some retail around here too, it looks very nice, like, it's done a great job with this whole area and I like how it's at the back of Fantasyland as well, it's got a really nice vibe about it around here. World of Frozen. Then here's Anna walking around. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I love it. Always nice seeing the Disney characters. What a fantastic area this. I'm excited for it to come to Paris. Be nice to have it very close to us. You got the little band over here as well. Arendelle just feels so alive. I love it. And it's nice because it's not too busy either around here as well. There's plenty of room to relax and just take it all in. Oh, we're just inside a shop called Northern Delights now. Look at the chocolate fountains. I think we've got treats around here as well. Look at Charlotte proper going in for it down there. Oh, they're yeah, nice to have the treats again. That's something that we really missed at Tokyo Disney. They don't really do cakes and treats like this. Like, oh, look at them. 
And we've just stepped out of World of Frozen. I really enjoyed seeing that area. It is stunning with the backdrop, all the theme in, the buildings, and two attractions in there. They've done a really good job. I look forward to heading back in there either later today or of course in our day two vlog that'll be coming up as well. Oh, how are you feeling, Charlotte? Oh my God, the humidity is so hot. We've just looked on the weather app and it says it feels like 37 now and you can definitely feel it. I'm sweating all over. Oh, you can. The highs would be in this trip. <laughs> But uh, here we go. I tell you what though, impressed with the new castle. Really enjoyed Worlds of Frozen. And we got one of my favorites coming up next. One of my favorite ever Disney attractions. And that is Mystic Manor. It's unique here in Hong Kong as well. Anyway, it's that hot. They're actually doing like a water parade, which is coming down shortly. So you might get wet here, Charlotte. To be honest, I won't even mind. I am that hot. <laughs> a bit of water splashing on me would be great right now. <laughs> Let's have a look. We're going to get a treat as well. Look at these that we've gone for here. These look lovely. Big donuts. So we got Duffy there, and of course, Mickey Mouse. And yeah, these were like five pounds each. Oh, delicious. Hey, here we go. It's time for the Pixar Water Play Street Party. This looks really fun. Hey, we think they were celebrities down at the front just. There's a lot of media around today. It's Buzz Lightyear. Woo, hello Buzz. <laughs> the Green Army men have got water guns spraying people. It must get bad at points because even the cast members have got like little Pixar rain jackets on. <laughs> Jesse! Oh, we got Rex on there, Mr. Potato Head, Slinky Dog. Oh, look at all the water sprinklers. <laughs> this is so much fun. Oh, look at Wheezy, he's a bit wet there. Go so Pete, Woody! <laughs> oh, this is great! I love it! Whee! You right, Charlotte? Whee! Oh my god! That's cool, me off now! This is so much fun! I love it! Harrison Ortiz comes out of the top. <laughs> all the cast members down here have all got water guns. Oh, brilliant. Hey! That was literally just what we needed, wasn't it? Oh, that was so refreshing, that was. I'm soaked. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. It's nearly 38 degrees. Yeah, that's the thing, like the humidity today. Like, I love how they do that. Like that was amazing. Really enjoyed it. The quality of the flows and all the performers in that as well in this heat. Fair play to them. Uh, good to see all the Pixar characters in there. The Toy Story flow was fantastic. The Incredibles in there. Uh, inside out, like I really enjoyed that. It was fantastic. Oh, it was so much fun. Everyone just had a huge smile on the face. <laughs> and yeah, there were some celebrities in there. Obviously, we don't know who they are. Um, but that's why there's been quite a lot of press we've seen waiting on Main Street. So yeah, I think some of the girls in there were celebrities of some form. People was going wild, so there must be celebrities. Yeah, people had like banners and everything, but uh, no, that was really good. I know you're strolling through Adventureland now. You have got an awesome version of the Jungle Cruise down here, and you've also got the fantastic show that we all know and love from Disney's Animal Kingdom, Festival of the Lion King. Oh, I love Festival of the Lion King. Yeah, so we're going to be seeing that at some point. There's another stage show we're going to see in Fantasyland. They've got a lot of entertainment here and the brand new Nighttime Spectacular. Uh, well, brand new for me anyway, and Shark, because we've never seen it on the new castle. But first, we're going to head down to see a grizzly bear. 
So we're now heading underneath the railroad tracks into three different lands. We're going to be starting off in Grizzly Gulch. Again, this is unique to Hong Kong because there's no frontier land in this park. You've got Grizzly Gulch instead. Down. We're then going to head Don't into Mystic yet. Point, which is home to Mystic Manor, an amazing dart ride. Again, original for this park. And then you've also got Toy Story Land here as well, which is very similar to Toy Story Playland at Disneyland Paris. So welcome to Grizzly Gulch. And look at this, you've got the grizzly bear carved out of the rocks just up there. Very different and a nice original attraction for us to go and go on now. Are you looking forward to this? It's awesome, this does. I'm really looking forward to giving it a go. You've never seen a POV or anything no, either? I've not seen anything. Yeah, it's got a little surprise, this ride. Let's uh, go and join the queue. Lovely round here with all the geysers. And this opened back in 2012. And this is what makes traveling to the different Disney parks around the world really special. You don't want to go to every Disney park and see the same things. I love seeing the original, unique attractions. And this is one of them. And the whole of Grizzly Gulch here is very nice. Looks similar to Frontierland, but then it's completely different as well. Like a lot of smaller buildings and just different signage and names for things, which I really like. And we're heading now onto Big Grizzly Mountain Runaway Mine Cars. Advertised wait of 20 minutes. Look at the sweat dripping off me, literally. Like, look at us. It is literally impossible to look nice in this weather. I have never sweat so much in my entire life. Look at us. Like, literally, I had a shower this morning and washed my hair, and it's completely just stuck to my head. At least we know not to bother tomorrow. I'm not bothered tomorrow. <laughs> Literally, like. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I enjoyed that parade though, that was refreshing. I hope we get a bit of a breeze on here, blimey. Oh I've got sweat dripping into my eyeballs. I'm Lovely. Ice cold shower tonight. <laughs> and 10 minutes later, and we're here in the station. Nice fast operations, multiple trains in service. Very excited to get back on this. Good luck, prospectors. Let's go, Grizzly! Oi! <laughs> Down the back! Oh. oh, I can hear him. to escape the big bay, you know. That's very nice, just up the lift hill. All the rock work at the side. Bear. I can't believe that. What's he doing? <laughs> oh, he's there! He's got a baby! Baby bear! And he's got. Is that TNT? I think it is. Oh no! This ain't a good sign. alternative to Big Thunder Mountain. That was fantastic. 
Well, we just had an awesome back row ride there on Big Grizzly Mountain. How was that for you? That was a brilliant ride, that was. I like the surprise element where it looks like you're going up the lift hill, but it's not. You're going backwards. It definitely felt like a mix between Big Thunder Mountain and Expedition Everest. I completely agree. Like, they got the balance there perfect. And to create something unique for this park as well, and very different with the forwards and backwards sections. What I loved as well, the launch is good, isn't oh, it? Oh, that really packed a punch, that did. It was excellent. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed this coaster a lot last time, but I'd say this trip, I feel like it's even better than what I remember. Like, I just really enjoyed that a lot. The length to it, the theming, the fact it's unique for this park. Uh, I thought that was amazing. Like, I really enjoyed that down the back. Uh, some really good forces. I think with the humidity as well. Like, it was quite forceful for what is a family coaster. Uh, what I like with that as well is the length of the backwards section on Everest at Animal Kingdom. It's quite a short backwards yes. section, whereas on this, you get a good, you know, like the air time. Oh, lovely breeze turns. coming from the back. I've never been sweating like this Honestly, before. Honestly, we are wet. Like, We're soaking. I'm going to stink by the end of the night. <laughs> What a nice area, Grizzly Gulches. Big Grizzly entrance up there. The Lucky Nugget Saloon just over here. That looks very similar to what you see in Frontierland. You got fish and chips over there. And you got like, all these water guns. This is not a sight you see very often. Charlotte walking through an active area of water. What is happening, Charlotte? No, I'm a changed person, but when I'm as hot as I am, a little bit of water is great. Oh, we've been up this trip, haven't we? We've been up. Look at this. Blacksmiths. Oh, we're about to make our way around the corner now. It's a mystic point to my favourite attraction at the park. Look who's coming out with his cowboy hat on. It's Mickey Mouse. Hey! There he is. Oh. Mickey Mouse, everybody. <laughs> oh. That's it. You get in the shade, Mickey. I don't blame you. <laughs> For seven years, I've been really excited to step back into Mystic Point on one of my favorite ever dark rides. Something else that I was really looking forward to showing Charlotte for the first time was how beautiful the building is. Look at this. Oh, oh no. no. It's having its refurbishment done. Luckily, the attraction's open, and I'd much rather have the ride actually open for us to experience. But sadly, the building is all covered over. And yeah, normally what Disney do is they put like a scrim up that's all themed, and uh, like they have the actual building on there but as you can see it's completely covered oh no that's a real shame i'm just so glad that it's actually open and it's only on a five minute wait but normally this is a gorgeous building it really is i've only seen some updated photos here charlotte oh, i've seen photos before it looks stunning but i'll just have to have a photo with this at least the attraction's open exactly. though exactly it could have been closed oh that's the thing missed it manor there it is i'm really surprised they didn't go for like a proper themed scrim on the front of it i mean i guess it's kind of themed i've been the is that a beanstalk growing up in there it looks like it um yeah, that's a shame oh dear but still, it's open and it's Mystic Manor. It's nice and quiet as well. With extra cargo netting. <laughs> at the end of the day, they are Disney parks and they've got to do the maintenance at some point to keep things looking fresh for everyone to enjoy. Just unfortunately, I didn't realise that either until we got here. Like, I hadn't seen any photos or anything. I thought we were going to literally see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's always such a beautiful building. Now, Mystic Manor has been offering tours here in Hong Kong since 2013. Let's look at how gorgeous the building normally is. <laughs> Make our way into this nice and thin queue line. This is effectively the park's version of the Haunted Mansion. But this is a trackless dark ride with a completely different storyline. Look at this model just here. Nice to get to see it on the model. Yeah, I mean, how stunning is that? Mystic Point, beautiful diorama. So in the queue line, you spend time looking at the collection of Lord Henry Mystic. An original attraction just here in Hong Kong, and I love this. The old fellow by my side is Albert, my travelling companion, confidant, and uh, oh, rather mischievous partner. These are just a few of our treasures, and here's our latest acquisition an ancient music box. Yes, you like that box, don't you? We'll examine it later. Oh, yes. Welcome, one and all, to Mystic Manor. 
lovely free show there with Albert, the little monkey. And that's all we're heading on to. Mystic Manor. It's one of my favourite ever Disney attractions. And of course, you're scoring it for the first time for Charlotte. Oh, I really didn't know what to expect. I've not watched any POVs. I did not know it was a track and start ride. I thought it was an Omni Mover. That was excellent. The theming in there was top notch and the animatronics in there were great. The storyline's fantastic. Touring around Mystic Manor with Lord Henry Mystic and his little monkey, Ooh. Albert, as well. He's been playing with that music box and the legend turns true as you're making your way round and everything comes to life. Some really clever effects in there as well. Like all the lasers and just bringing everything to life and the soundtrack for that as well the beautiful original score produced just for this ride and that's a big reason for many people wanting to come here to hong kong disneyland and trust me if you're a disney parks fan it's more than worth it for that attraction alone it can only be found here and it's just an amazing experience i really look forward to going on there again because there's so much going on in there you can't take it all in on a first ride there's so many little details to see and that's the beauty of a trackless dark ride because it varies depending yeah, it on your does, position yeah. you know sometimes you get close to different scenes and notice different things going on. Uh, very rewritable, that it is. is. It's beautiful. Show about the facade being covered up. Uh, but I'm sure we'll be back in the future to see it again. And uh, yeah, just really enjoy getting back on that. We waited 10 minutes as well. I love the storyline. And you know what? It makes me really miss the days uh, when Disney were building original attractions. I'd love to see more stuff like that. Mystic Point, what an area. You've also got the Explorers Club restaurants right next door as well. Have a look at the menu that's over here. Explorer's Semi Buffet. What did they do just in here? Yeah, you can see the different options available just on there for you. And the area also has the Garden of Wonders. It's a nice little walkthrough with a few different photo opportunities. And also, it's in the shade as well, which is quite nice. It's all the planting around here and foliage that really makes this park. It's red! 
Hey, see how we're making our way into the next area, just around the corner. This is Toy Story Land, very similar setup to Toy Story Playland at Disneyland Paris. In fact, you've got the three exact same attractions in here as you can get in Paris. So you got the parachute drop just over there, it's called Fort Emery here. Jesse's Snack Roundup, RC Racer down there, and also Slinky Dog Spin off to the right hand side. Yeah, I do like this area. All the big light bulbs are my favourite when <laughs> you're walking around. You really feel like you're in Andy's backyard, don't you? It's great. It's so cute. There's RC. Just in the Toy Story shop. And the guy in here, this is very nice. So much lots of merch. Oh, he's all dressed up there. Oh, that's nice. You got all of a good Disney gift shop. Oh, look at this nice mug, Toy Story Land. So this is 139 Hong Kong dollars. So the way we've worked it out, it would work out that it was like 13 to 14 pounds. So remove the rest of that, about 14 pounds. Yeah, that's how we're kind of working that's how we're it out. Working yeah. it out. Nice. Parachute from the sky. Don't worry, these guys are professionals. Something you may have also noticed is that a lot of the audio in Hong Kong is in English. It's the same with Mystic Manor. You enjoy the attraction in English and that's because a lot of people here in Hong Kong do speak English as well which makes it really easy if you're coming from the UK hey, over here. Partners, here and we just made our way around the corner and into Adventureland here now home to the Jungle Cruise actually a very different version of this iconic Disney attraction so I think we're gonna head on to that next now this version of Adventureland quite big and it's also got a lot of shade as well, which you really need on a day like this. Oh, look at them misters. Let's go straight for them. Oh, this is what we want. Oh! <laughs> it's great by the little tiki there. Oh, that's nice, that. Not very often you see Charlotte embrace and stuff like this. Oh, 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 she's loving it. <laughs> and here it is, the entrance to Jungle River Cruise. Famous Jungle River Cruise. Enjoy your adventure. Ten minute wait. Now last time I was here, you actually had separate queues for different languages, but it seems like they're just running the one today, so I'm not too sure. Yeah, last time you could wait for like an English tour or Chinese. Now as there's no rivers of America here at Hong Kong Disneyland, Jungle Cruise is a much wider river that runs all throughout the centre of Adventureland. So I'm looking forward to giving this a go. It's quite theatrical from what I remember. You've also got Tarzan's treehouse there in the middle. It's under refurbishment at the moment, but you can still get on the rafts that take you over to explore the little island in the middle. And off we go. Seems like the switch between languages now. Oh, <laughs> 
Jason。一二六哥，我睇到你成功离开咗呢个十秒咯。那你们看到前方一大群，你们看到左边的新型打手叉。Tell you all these guys got the right idea in this heat. Chilling out. 但是我们还是快点离开吧，否则他们下次要射中我们的。Ending final round, you stop by Epic Games. Thank you for your support. Okay. 哇，好劲啊 ！And now we are now coming to the happy four four five. It seems the happy four four today is moving. 有啦，都唔知你西游喺下边跟佢 fit fit 啊！冇事啊嘛，冇事你走啦。好啦，咁前面就系呢个原住民嘅部落啦。咁咧，请问你做咩？哇，原来有人喺度啊，仲叫我哋去用刀。哇，你输啦，你走。Jungle River Cruise, a very different version of the attraction because it's a lot bigger, but also you've got that scene there with all the fire effects as well. Oh, that was brilliant, those big blasts of fire at the end. I didn't expect to see that. Yeah, I did enjoy it. It was a bit stop-start. I think they were struggling uh, loading some of the boats up in the loading area. And um, you know what? I really enjoyed getting back on that again and uh, heading round all of the river just there. We just had to come and have a sit down and get a nice classic coat because to the eye, we're really struggling, aren't we, today? I've never felt temperatures Ooh. like this. And when you're at a theme park, it's yeah. a lot harder when it's just so hot. Literally, I could get my top <laughs> and bring it out with sweat. It is just that hot. Luckily, we have got two days here, so we can take it a bit slower and not have to go full on with the attractions. Obviously, Hong Kong Disneyland is the smallest out of all the Magic Kingdom parks, so you could easily just do a day here uh, to get everything in. But we thought we'd come for two because you want the full resort experience see the hotel and also uh, see all of the entertainment and we're going to go and see Mickey and the Wondrous Book aren't we now? Oh I love seeing a Disney stage show we haven't seen any while we've been on this trip so I'm really looking forward to seeing one. We're going to make our way up to the theatre now in Fantasyland. Oh, this is stunning it's not just the castle that's been updated it's the whole area out the front here as well looks beautiful and cannot wait to see the nighttime spectacular on here tonight as well which I've heard is really good, the soundtrack for this, I love it. I listen to it quite a bit at home and I've never actually seen the show in person. And that will change tonight. We're just gonna have a little walk through the castle now. Castle of Magical Dreams. <laughs> So you've got Enchanted Treasures, top to the left hand side, just a little shop, and you're back out the other side. Yeah, it's kind of like an extension on the back as well, this is nice. And this is a look at the back of the castle. Looks nice even from the back. I'd seen a few photos and videos when this was completed in 2020 and I wasn't too sure about the back. I thought it maybe looked a bit boxy, but I actually seen it here in person. It's not at all. It's got some really nice details on there. Stunning, really nice upgrade for here. And this is located down in the Storybook Theatre. Mickey and the Wondrous Book. Let's go and see the show. Let's go. 
未滴水噶。我个鼻，哦，我好中意我个鼻噶。book is a fantastic production. That was excellent that was. There were so many Disney characters in there and I loved how it was talking Mickey in that show. Oh I really made it. Now the show did also have English subtitles at the side so you could see what was going on but basically Mickey Mouse got trapped in the book and then was going through all the different pages with lots of different Disney stories in there. Oh it was lovely that was. There was a really nice scene with the princesses so you had Tangled, Brave and the Little Mermaid and they all came in and did the song, the separate ones and then they all sang together. It was really nice. Yeah I loved that scene. You had Aladdin in there, Princess and the Frog. It was overall a brilliant production. Uh, really nice with the book as well. Olaf was in there, Goofy. Uh, it was just amazing. Like a really good stage show. 30 minutes, action packed and we got covered in confetti at the end as well. Can't beat a Disney stage show and I really enjoyed seeing that. That's the thing with Hong Kong Disneyland. It is the smallest out of the Magic Kingdom parks but it's got a lot of entertainment and like I say you've got Festival of the Lion King here so I'll be checking that out tomorrow as well. And as we enter into the early evening now we've made our way here into Tomorrowland and we're going to have a ride on Hyperspace Mountain just over here. So yeah it has got the Star Wars overlay on this, very similar to Disneyland Paris. Really hoping we see these Star Wars overlays go away soon, especially in Paris because it just doesn't really fit the theme at all. With this one they can kind of get away with it more with the look of the building. But yeah 25 minutes for Hyperspace Mountain, let's go. Very fast. 
great operations, as you'd expect from a Disney park. And there's the ride, manufactured by Vacoma. I like all the planets in here. I'm sure you won't see much in the POV, but I'll put in a little bit of footage as we make our way on to Hyperspace Mountain. with a 20 minute wait there for Space Mountain. Enjoy getting on that. I love an indoor coaster. My only fault with this, halfway around the layout, I felt like you were just doing the same track over and over again. And because it's quite light in there, you can see the track that's coming up. I think mean, that's the thing, because of the Star Wars overlay and the projections, it's making it a lot lighter. Uh, so you can see the track. Obviously the whole idea of Space Mountain really is that you don't know where you're going as you're traveling through space. But still, I did enjoy it. Long ride very smooth and comfortable uh, two across seats on there as well uh, but we we're on the front row which was quite nice probably better and more forceful down at the back though yeah we'll have to try and give it a back row at some point definitely but uh, no it's nice to get on there i'd like to see uh, the star wars overlay go i think for me this is my least favorite version uh, out there of space mountain but still it's an indoor coaster of some great forces and uh, yeah it was nice to get on there over to the left then in Tomorrowland, you've also got the Stark Expo area, including two different dart rides. We're gonna be riding both of them in tomorrow's vlog. So make sure you come back and join us for a second day here in this park. Then we're gonna make our way now over to Grizzly Gulch again, probably another ride on Grizzly, and also as well, another ride on Mystic Manor. Make the most of it, we've got the nighttime show coming up tonight as well, which I'm really excited to see for the first time. We're back around here in Grizzly Gulch now. Let's come over to the Lucky Nugget Saloon. It's like it's made for me this. Fish and chips and chicken nuggets and a drink for like nine quid. Yeah, that's not too bad at all for a combo. Oh, I did enjoy me fish and chips there and chicken nuggets. That was perfect for me, that was. Like my favourites all together. Brilliant. If we could have got a Greg sausage roll, like, it would have been even better. Yeah, it would have been the full trilogy. Uh, well, there we go. I did enjoy that. We also waited 10 minutes for another ride on Grizzly, which was fantastic. And then we also did a 10 minute wait just for Mystic Manor again as well. Thought we may as well make the most of it, get some re rides in. Just over an hour to go until the park closes. And Dumbo the Flying Elephant just there. Beautiful. So at 8.30, right on park close, we're going to be watching Momentus, which is the nighttime spectacular with fireworks, fountains and projections. And that's going to be on the castle, which I'm really looking forward to seeing. I think that was a big reason for them doing the castle upgrade here in Hong Kong, was so they could do bigger nighttime spectaculars. So I'm excited for that. Oh, we're just inside the shop located within the Castle of Magical Dreams. And look at this amazing model just over there. That would look lovely in our living room. <laughs> well, they have got a smaller one just over here, though. it's quite nice. And they've actually got a new partner statue here with Walt Disney and Mickey Mouse sat on a bench. I'm not too sure where in the park it is. I can't see it out on Main Street. Maybe it's in Fantasyland somewhere. Oh, and here's the statue. I thought I'd seen a few photos of it in Fantasyland. Walt Disney with a really nice pose and Mickey Mouse looking up to him just there with the castle just behind. Oh, it's lovely that is, really nice. <laughs> the castle is looking wonderful and it's so grand and magnificent with the mountains there as the backdrop. As we turn around the corner here, Main Street USA is all lit up. I think we're gonna have a little look through some of the shops, aren't we now? I love going in the shops. See some of the merch, hey. Now Duffy and friends are all here as well. 
at the Hong Kong Disney Resort. We saw them over at Tokyo. Yeah, I believe like Duffy's house is just over there and you can meet all the characters. Yeah, they're very big over here at the Asia Parks. And here we are on Main Street. It's not quite as detailed as the other versions and actually the buildings are a lot smaller but it's still really nice. A big thing that you do notice is that it's a lot wider and also it doesn't have the tram tracks running down the middle. It's still very nice though. Similar building to that of Disneyland in California, of course the original. Centennial Hall just over there. This one's got a lot of snacks. Midtown Delight just over there, the ice cream shop. There's a Pandora jewelry. There's a Starbucks down there as well. And quite a few different eateries. And of course the main shop. These are quite nice, the little bouquets that they do here. Mickey and friends. And then you've got Duffy like and that. all the little characters just there. <laughs> What a nice collection of Disney socks in here. <laughs> I'm liking all of those. Stitch socks, all oh, these tongues sticking out as well. Oh, how delicious do these look? Nice waffles just there. Oh, and they got the Mickey waffles too. Nice to have all the snacks here. Hey, and here's the shop dedicated to Duffy and friends just in here. <laughs> They're so popular over here at the parks in Asia. Charlotte loves these characters as well. <laughs> oh, you gotta love that Main Street music loop. There is she. Oh, So uh, cute. Wearing a little jacket. This headband is so cute. It's all the Duffy and his friends on this headband. It's lovely. Now, in terms of pricing here, we mentioned that over at Tokyo Disneyland, things were a lot cheaper, but more Disney pricing here, isn't it? These are about £36, these are, which are quite pricey, to be honest. Yeah, back to your more kind of yeah. standard pricing for the merchandise here and for food as well. These are cute. Also got the art of animation over there as well, where you can draw the Disney characters. And we'll be having to go on the Disneyland Railroad tomorrow as well. Grand Circle Tour from Main Street Station. I love this little pagoda in the middle, it's very nice here. Certainly looks the part. Oh, and here's Duffy and friends all out here. It's a photo opportunity as well. Oh, I love it. Really nice. <laughs> Lovely to see them, isn't it? Oh, I love that. There was playing. It's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow in the toilet. Oh, I love that. Right, we're gonna make our way now into the Disneyland Emporium. Just here, she's off. <laughs> We're still selling the shirt that I bought seven years ago. There we go. <laughs> Sean the sailor. <laughs> I wore that on the cruise. A couple of the different T-shirts here with Hong Kong Disneyland on. And that one's got Duffy and Friends on just there as well. I really like the logo for this park. Like, very nice. You got the caps here in pink and navy blue as well. <laughs> yeah, it's good, isn't it? That? I saw it just around the corner. £23 that one, isn't that too bad? That's goofy with some big boxes. <laughs> All the plushies over here. Shop's massive. There's not really loads of park specific merchandise that just says Hong Kong Disneyland on, or things like for Grizzly Gulch or Mystic Manor. And lots of ways are quite cute though, I can see Charlotte wearing them. <laughs> Some bags just over here. Hong Kong Disneyland, darling. You might be wondering why am I not wearing any ears? It's been too hot, so oh. I had to make sure I've kept my hat on. <laughs> so there's been no ear wearing, unfortunately. Oh, it's been too hot for that. And here's a look at some of the merchandise of World of Frozen. Very nice with Anna and Elsa. It's like the big clock tower, I like that. Olaf, <laughs> he likes warm hugs, you know. Now look at some of the World of Frozen merchandise that they've got just here. Cup and saucers just down there. Plates and stuff are quite nice, aren't they? They don't say World of Frozen on, but they're quite classy, aren't they? Five minutes to go then until the nighttime show, so we thought we'll just come on a little walk round towards World of Frozen and see it at night. But firstly, look at it, it's a small world. How nice is this all lit up at night? It reminds me of it's a small world at Disneyland in California, how they have it at Christmas. Oh, this is lovely. And because it's on every 15 minutes, you're getting the little lighting show here as well. Yeah, we'll have a ride on here tomorrow in the day two vlog.
Now there's actually two entrances into World of Frozen. We came through the main one earlier on, but this one next to it's a small world, and we just thought we'd come and see the area at night before the nighttime spectacular. And this looks gorgeous. This is beautiful. Wow. Look how nicely lit up it all is, all the way across. And Charlotte's got a Mickey ice cream bar. You've also got a Mickey ice cream bar. No, I haven't. Yeah. Whee! <laughs> I'll tell you what, the Imagineers have done a really good job with this. In my opinion, this is the best frozen land out of all the Disney parks. The best frozen attraction is in Fantasy Springs at Disney Sea, but the actual area. This looks amazing. The fact that this view right there is coming to our local Disney park, Disneyland Paris, does make me very excited because this is beautiful. Oh, they've really hit the mark with this area, especially at night. It's just so beautiful. The camera doesn't do it justice. Like all the little boats, in fact, you've got the lighthouse over at the side there as well. Everything about it, this is amazing. There's a look over towards Wandering Oakens over there as well. She's nicely lit up. the chimes world of frozen an amazing area i'd say this area has actually exceeded my expectations as well and it's coming to paris oh that's really exciting it's not going to be too far away from us i did actually see a couple of days ago they've just topped off the castle in paris yeah hopefully that's going to maybe open next year maybe i guess we'll see construction's been moving very slow but it will be worth it to have this it's a beautiful area, it's the details around here, the music, just got such a nice atmosphere walking around this area and taking it all in. And I really enjoyed both the attractions that we did this morning as well. And here we're going to make our way now back down to the castle, ready for Momentous, the nighttime spectacular. Really excited to see this, it looks great from watching some clips online. Well, you're going to see it now in our vlog here on Theme Park Worldwide. So come and join us for Momentous, the nighttime spectacular here at Hong Kong Disneyland.
some highlights there from the Mentos the Night Time Spectacular. And we thought instead of wrapping up the vlog on Main Street where we're absolutely sweating, we come back to the room here at the Disneyland Hotel and have a nice shower. So we're refreshed, aren't we? I have had a lovely cold shower, <laughs> which was much needed after today. I've got to say, Mementos was spectacular. What a nighttime show. Oh, that was brilliant, that was. The projections were great and it was a really nice choice of songs in that show as well. I think because they've redesigned the castle, they've obviously made places on there for the projections to be a lot clearer, uh, like a lot higher up on the castle, so people could see them further back. Really like that design. And I tell you what, the quality of them were fantastic. There was a lot of pyrotechnics in there. Not really big fireworks, uh, more show fireworks, as I would say, like very close to the audience, which were fantastic, in sync with all the songs. Um, it was lovely. It was a really nice show, a great mix, some Disney classics, some newer Disney movies in there as well. Uh, it was like about a 20 minute show. You had the fire effects, they were good. Oh, they were fantastic, like across the castle, which was great. Yeah, it was a real blast of fire. Not like we needed warming up today. We were hot enough already, uh, but they were awesome. Along with that, uh, I really enjoyed the fact you had the fountains, the lighting, like the spotlights were really bright in there. And overall, I'd say that's one of my favourite nighttime spectaculars. Really enjoyed it. Um, but that does bring us to the end of day one at Hong Kong Disneyland. Have you enjoyed it? Oh, it's been really good to see another Disney park and Mystic Manor was definitely my favourite. It was excellent. Mystic Manor is beautiful. I know we didn't get to see the <laughs> facade, um, but at least we've had a couple of rides on the attraction today. It's a beautiful dark ride. It's one of the best Disney rides out there anywhere in the world. And it's exclusive to here along with that Grizzly Gulch. I enjoyed that so much more, Big Grizzly Mountain, this time than what I remembered. It was excellent. It really took me by surprise, that coaster. The launch on there is great. A big surprise today as well was just how wonderful World of Frozen is. That whole area uh, I thought was stunning as well today. It was stunning around there and at night with all the light and it looked excellent. Yeah, it was nice exploring that. <laughs> um, we did Space Mountain. That was good. Jungle Cruise. I uh, had a little bit of a stroll around some of the other areas of the park. The New Castle. Big fan of that. <laughs> uh, I know you didn't get see the old one here but oh, no, you've I seen didn't. it at Disneyland. It's <laughs> such a grand scale and it fits in so well. It does like it's beautiful castle. Uh, had a little stroll on Main Street, seen some of the merchandise and uh, yeah it's just been a fantastic day. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, the show was fantastic that we saw as well. Uh, I thought that was wonderful and uh, yeah we've got lots more to see. We've got uh, quite a few rides that we didn't cover today. Some more entertainment to see uh, and lots more which is going to be coming up in the next vlog from the park. Uh, but the next video will actually be a full tour of the Hong Kong Disneyland Hotel because it's beautiful isn't oh, it? Oh we've been staying here for like three nights it's been lovely. And you can see a picture of it actually there just behind uh, with some of the Disney characters as well but uh, come and join us for that and day two coming up in the park as well. That leaves us with one final thing to say. Get, Get out, out there and keep on riding. riding. Goodbye.